I talk, I share. Places you know, places you don't know, places you didn't know you didn't know. Places as they are, sometimes with buildings as they were, before they change irreversibly. And the danger then is that the story ends. It does not get told. And future generations will have no idea what went on here or the history. And that is why I do what I do. I feel I have a responsibility. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? Not quite how I started doing my YouTube work, but this is how it's developed. This is the final part of my Three Oak story. I'm at Gaston Church and uh, I finally find the graves of my great grand and granddad and uh, share thoughts with you, share views with you. So I just wanted to say thanks for coming on the, I hate to use the word journey, but I'll say thanks for coming along with me. I hope you have appreciated the thing that I've been saying. I think enjoyed is probably not the correct word to use. Um, but this has been my story. The Three Oaks of my family. And we're not there anymore. But at least I've got a record for future historians of a family that was. The parish of Gessling is an odd place. There's three distinct parts of it really. You've got Gessling, Gessling Thorn, and you've also got Three Oaks. Now, I don't know why this car has arrived. Let's sort things out here. Now the problem for me is I'm filming into the sun, which is not always good. This is the parish church of St. Lawrence Gessling. <coughs> it's a grade one listed church. Dates back to the 11th century, although this surviving wall here at this end, it's quite possible that parts of it are Saxon. The interior was restored in the very late 19th century, but there is a font that dates from the 14th century in there. And supposedly my family have got graves here. Though really what chance I have of finding them without any knowledge I think it's going to be a bit like looking for a needle in a haystack but look at these fine walls here that says Saxon to you doesn't it or it does to me with some of those windows And then we come on to the Norman bits here, presumably. Foot scraper. I doubt very much if it's open. But I'm certainly not going to uh, try and get in in case it's got a lock on it but once again you see situated up on the hillside when the bells ring to call the congregation to worship 
everybody can find it. And that's looking over towards Hastings over there, which isn't really that far away. My problem is, I've got nobody left alive to even ask where these graves might be. I'd probably have to come over again at some time and uh, there's a nice stained glass window. Well, a shame I can't get inside some of these churches to see the sun coming through these windows because it must be a very pretty sight. Yes, as I was saying, there's some, there's some fairly modern graves here. My family's a bit, a bit further over, I guess, but to be honest with you, I haven't got the time, at the moment at least, to go looking. Well, here in Geston Churchyard, and I'm pleased to record this for her family, one lifelong friend of my mum's, Joyce Brunger, and Bill. We used to go and see them, we used to get off the bus in Breed and we'd have to walk halfway down the road between Breed and Selscombe. That was my auntie Joyce. <laughs> wow. Sorry, things are welling up a bit now. It's getting a bit close. Probably the last ones of my family that would be buried here would be going back to 1960 something, maybe. So likely be over there in that corner. I think I'd have to do some more research before I really come looking. The last thing you want to do is to go walking all over other people's graves. But there we go, a nice piece of topiary in that corner. Now people are gathering, I don't know what for, so I think it perhaps timely that uh, I make my departure. But this is the parish church for the parish that my family lived in for all those years. St. Lawrence, the parish church of Gessling, and a couple of mausoleums here. And a lovely gate to go out. And as people are coming in, I will bid you farewell. I haven't quite bid you farewell just yet. I just come out looking at the, this tree. Those people coming in. <laughs> There's a footpath goes right the way through the churchyard I've just discovered, out the other side. And I could hear voices coming up the hill the other side. These people that you've just seen coming through the lich gate are going down the other side. And of course, at this time of day, what else could they be? Dog walkers. <laughs> this is a lovely oak tree. Yes, it is oak, and I bet that has got one hell of a tail it could tell. Look at that, isn't it lovely? <coughs> Excuse me. And I think this is probably as nice a place as any to finally finish my visit. <laughs> well, there's a lovely side view of the church, <coughs> Church of St Lawrence, Gastling, in the morning sun. How lovely is that? And at the moment, I can't find my great-grandmother's grave or any of the other family graves, and yet I was told they were easy. 
I'm going to need some more help. Well, I have returned for the third time to St Lawrence Church in Gessling. And I've just walked through the gate that was erected there in 1901. And my timing couldn't have been more perfect. And I hope this is reflected in the footage because I don't know, there's something about the wonders of the creation when the sun comes up and it's coming up right next to the church. All right, I can't get all of the church in, but if I step to one side, you can see most of the church against the sun. And I don't know. There's something about churches and the rising sun that uh, it gives you hope. I think that's what I was trying to say. Hope for a good day. Hope for better things to come. And this is third time lucky for me because although I haven't found my great great granddad's grave and probably I never will here, uh, it would be really like looking for a needle in a haystack. I think so many of these graves, the dead just worn away and the writing's gone. But I found my great grandmother and great granddad's grave and that is where I'm going to visit now. This is my great grand and granddad. William Albert and Modit Ballard. She and her mother were the village midwives and layers out of bodies. All had close connections with the church over many years. And here he is. Put up by my granddad and his brother Wilfred, William Albert Ballard, son of another William Ballard from Tenterton and it seems that's where my family and my Ballard side come from which would explain why in times back we apparently own 25% of the old Wittish and Perry and of his wife Modit and I'm going to just make an effort to see if I can clear some of the um, some of the foliage away from the bottom the least I can do is to try and clear it a little bit and show that there is still somebody around who cares uh, my granddad Courtney Waldron Ballard was named after Modit's father Courtney Waldron Westcombe, but as I said just now, finding his grave would probably be like finding a needle in a haystack. Now, when I said earlier there's no one left alive to ask, I was thinking of my mum's generation. Of course, I forgot, I've got second cousins, haven't I? So I got in contact with Paul, who is Uncle Wilfred's grandson, he has done much research into the family history and he very kindly provided me with this photograph of Courtney's grave. I'm really indebted to you Paul, thank you very much you've given me so much information. I think without you it's fair to say this video and this story would not have been possible. And this, I believe, is Courtney Waldron Westcombe, a photograph taken before he died. Now he died in 1895 so this photograph would be a miraculous survivor. I think it's probably been re-photographed again or, or copied onto photo paper. I did wonder looking at that little telegraph pole behind but apparently thin poles like that were the order of the day in the 1880s, 1890s when the telegraph was being developed. I'm quite happy to accept this is Courtney Waldron Westcombe. And every bit of his clothing suggests that 1890, just about, would be the time it was taken. Well, I managed to clear away a little bit of the debris. And 
I managed to cut a couple of Mombrisha on the way over. Great granddad died in in 1949. Had uh, Modit, she died in 1975. In memories of them and great great granddad Courtney. I may never get here again, but I've been, I've paid my respects. And I think that's probably a fitting end to the video about Three Oaks. Not only is it a place you didn't know you didn't know, it was a place I didn't know I didn't know either until I started delving into family history. So apologies for a little bit of emotion there, but I feel like I've come to the end of a journey. No idea where I go from here, but I guess you could say the chapter closes, another one opens. I wonder what the next one will be. I will leave you with this view of the sun rising alongside St Lawrence Church. It was third time lucky for me. I was able to finally do what I wanted to do. And as a final activity before I left, I was able to honour a pledge I made to Mum that I would return her to her family as best I could. And so I had a an amount of her ashes left. We'd already scattered some in places she used to live. I had very discreetly scattered some in various places in Three Oaks. The remainder I scattered discreetly around the churchyard by the by my great grand and granddad's grave, Joyce Brunger's grave, and then around the outside of the churchyard. So she was back home in Gessling. <sighs> Technically, I suppose that was a bit naughty, but I did write to the vicar of the church. I did not receive any further communication, so I had to do it without permission. Anybody watching this that has anything to do with the church authorities, I do apologise. No offence was meant, but it was something I had to do, and I hope you'll understand that. So my mum is home now with her family. And I have done what I set out to do. So I'll leave you with this photograph. Once again, thank you for coming with me. Like I said, the sun rising alongside the church always says to me, there's hope. And that's the message I will leave with you.